Hello everyone. So in this video, we're going to we're going to look at the state monad. So uh, the topic for today is um, the topic for today is uh, we're going to look at the state monad, and uh, the state monad uh, is basically a monad. And uh, and the the inspiration for this specific video again, I'm going to cite this wonderful paper. This wonderful paper by Philip uh, Philip Wadler on uh, monads for functional programming and um, I highly highly recommend uh, reading this paper and um, and uh, so this is my citation here for uh, for uh, some of the examples that I'm going to bring up in this video uh, some of these examples in some sense are directly directly motivated and inspired uh, from this from this paper here so what I'm going to do right now is um, we're going to start off with basically just a definition we're going to we're just going to Use the type synonym to um, to to define to define my state here. So I'm going to say type of state is basically in this case is something as simple as just an integer. All right. So I'm just just giving another label. I'm just creating creating another label to my type int, which is in this case a state. All right. And um, of course, a state could be anything. It could be an integer. It could be a char. It could be a list of something. It could be anything, but for this specific example, we're going to keep it a little bit simple where my state is nothing but an integer. And I'm going to now I'm going to now say um, I'm going to create another label where I'm going to say in this case uh, I'm going to create another label where I have my type constructor, I have my type constructor M. M of A is actually equal to is basically equal to a function, equal to a function that takes in some state and gives you back as an output some value which is in this case a tuple of a comma comma state all right so what i've done here is i basically created two kinds of labels here i've created a label for an integer and i've created a label for this function and uh, the label for my integer in this case is uh, nothing but a state and the label for this function over here is basically m of a here Okay, so now again, just to put a little bit in context here. I know that um, I know that M over here is acting as a type constructor. This is acting as a type constructor. All right, and uh, I also know I also I also know that the kind the kind for uh, for my um, for my uh, uh, M over here is basically it takes in uh, a concrete. Uh, Type over here and uh, and uh, gives you back some other concrete type because the kind in this in this in this type world in this in this type signature I know that a has a kind of star okay it's a concrete concrete type and uh, m over here m over here is something is basically is basically something that uh, that happens to happens to take in the star it consumes the star and out comes back out comes back another another concrete type another concrete type which is basically m of a okay so that's the that's the kind for my for my type constructor m all right now if i if i have this already laid out here i can then think about uh from my from my last video i know that um that the definition the formal definition for my uh for my uh a monad uh again the best way to do this would be to actually pull this up from my uh haskell so I'm just going to open up a terminal here. So let's just open up a terminal. And um, what I'm going to do on this terminal is something really simple. All I'm just going to do is fire up my Haskell shell here. And um, let's just run an info on a monad. And uh, I'm just going to take everything from the shell, which is this piece here. OK, just a definition of my monad. And uh, let's just come back to our uh, blackboard and uh, let's just bring this somewhere over here okay so this is this is a formal definition of the type class monad monad in uh, in, in in Haskell and I know that this M over here this M over here uh, uh, what is what is the kind for this M here so if I look at if I look at these type signatures if I look at this type signature over here let's just look at one such example if I look at this type signature over here, I know that whatever that the kind for m of a, the kind for m of a 
must be a concrete type, meaning this must actually be a star. The kind for A in this case is a concrete type as well. So the what the type constructor M, the type constructor of M in this type class has a kind, it has a kind, it has a kind that basically takes in a concrete type star and gives you back, gives you back a star. Alright, so if I would like to make any type an instance of my type class monad, I must keep this in mind that whatever I'm going to make that uh, type an instance of my type class monad, it must have a kind, it must have a kind that takes in a star and gives you back a star, meaning it takes in some concrete, concrete type and gives you back as an output another concrete, concrete type. That's the kind of type constructor I'm looking for. And from here, I know that I, I already have that kind, I already have the type available with me, which takes in a star to a star, which is this, this, this M right there. Okay, I already, I already have that in place, which means now I'm, I'm in some position to actually formally create an instance, create an instance of my, um, uh, of my monads type class. So I can start off by saying an instance, instance of my monad, and uh, in place of this M over here, I'm going to I'm going to place this uh, this this big M over there. Okay, so I'm going to place that big M over there, and uh, I'm going to continue this by saying where where uh, let's first define our uh, let's first take and define the implementation to our return method. So where return? Okay, what does return do? The return takes in some some value of some kind a and then it gives you back another value which has a type of m of a. All right, so I'm going to say return, I'm going to say return, let's say it takes in some value, some value a, some value a, and uh, out comes back, out comes back some value that happens to be of type m of a. But what is this m of m of a? Now remember, we've replaced all lowercase m with this, with this, with this uppercase m that belongs in this, in this, in this, uh, in this type definition over here. So this is something equivalent to, equivalent to a, of a of I'm just going to rewrite that where I'm going to replace my lowercase m with the uppercase uh, pink m and um, just so that it becomes a little bit easy to understand what's going on at this point here. All right, so this a over here, the value of this, whatever the value over here is, happens to be of the type that belongs, that is part of this type uh, 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 type variable. And uh, this m of a, how do I create a value that has this type of m of a? Well, in order to create a value that has a type of this m of a, I just I just must um, I must just basically create create a value which which belongs to that to that type constructor right there. This piece over here, this piece over here, is basically the type signature. And if I were to follow this type signature, whatever value I create from the type signature is going to have a type of m of a. All right, so how do I do that? What is what is this piece over here? This piece over here, nothing but a function. Is nothing but a function. So I'm going to say return of a equals to equals to a function is nothing but a function, the entire thing is a function that takes in some state, let's call this uh, with, a, with a variable, uh, in this case, s, and it gives you back as an output, it gives you back as an output, in this case, a tuple, where I have my value, value a, okay, comma, comma, the actual, the actual state over here, which is in this case, my s. All right, so I've got my I've got my return return defined here, and um, I can now go ahead and define uh, my 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 bind method, which is uh, right here. Okay, so what does the bind method do? The bind method actually takes in some value of uh, of, a, of a of a type, which is m of a. It takes in a function, which is which goes from a to m of b. And then as an output, it gives you back something that happens to be of type M of B. All right, so how am I going to, how am I going to define this here? So uh, let's start off by first, by first, um, uh, so this is the, this is, I'm currently in the, in the value world. And in the value world, I'm just going to, I'm just going to lay out the implementation uh, to this uh, bind, uh, bind method. And the bind method takes in as a first parameter, a first parameter, some kind of a monadic value, which in this case is uh, is uh, m of a. So, uh, so I'm going to say in this case, um, okay, this is going to take uh, the first value. Let's just let's just give it let's just give it some 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 value m. Okay, 
I have some some variable m that holds the monadic value of m of a okay and uh, the second parameter the second parameter is basically this function is this function over here and uh, let's call this function maybe by the name of k okay I'm just going to call this as k what is this entire thing equal to this entire thing okay if it the bind method takes in this it takes in this and it should give you back as an output something that has a kind of m of b what is m of b here now remember every lowercase m basically gets replaced with this uppercase m here okay so it's basically something of m of b and where this pink uppercase m basically belongs belongs over here okay so what is m of b here well m of b is basically any value that has a type of 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 this of this pink m b is basically going to be something of this kind it's basically just a function so i can say that this entire thing this entire thing over here is nothing but just a function is just a function is just a function that takes in some state s it takes in some state s okay and what do you do with the state s here okay so if i take in the state s okay if i if i take if if this entire thing takes if this entire thing takes in a function which is uh, the first parameter in the function is basically my state s I'm going to take a state I'm going to take the state s and then I'm going to apply that I'm going to apply that on this on this uh, monadic value m over here what is this monadic value m here this monadic value m over here is basically this thing m of a what is m of a what is some value that happens to be of type m of a that value that happens to be of type m of a is again right here is some it's a function it's a function that takes in a state and gives you gives you out as an output a tuple that that has a first component first component this uh, this uh, this this uh, value of a comma comma whatever is the newer the 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 new new state there so this this thing is equivalent to saying okay let me take this state s here let me apply that on this on this function uh, on this on an, on this monadic value m here so i'm going to say s i'm going to take my uh, my function m which takes in a state so i'm going to give it a state s there what does this give you back as an output this gives you back as an output it gives you back as an output some tuple it gives you as an output some some tuple so maybe i don't know let's just give it some some names here so i'm just going to say let's say it gives you back as an output some value a okay that a and it gives you back a new state let's say that is inside the variable inside the variable y and now i'm going to say all right so this is this is this is this is one piece over here and uh, now if i'm trying to be a little bit true with my with my with my haskell here so uh, i just make sure that i i do not forget my uh, let bindings so i'm going to say this entire thing is let of a comma y equals to m of uh, in this case m of s n n okay and uh, i'm then going to continue i'm then going to continue saying that uh, now i have this function k over here okay i have this function k here what does this function k do here this function k is is this piece uh, the signature for this function k is right there this is the signature for my function k what does the function k do well a function k takes in some value of type a now what is this a in this case this a in this case is basically the a that has been extracted from this monadic value whatever this monadic value is which is m of a i've extracted a out of it how did i do that well i've done it right there when i call my function m on my state s i've already extracted that a right there so i'm going to say now i'm going to take this function k i'm going to take this function k i'm going to apply a on that okay if i apply a on that what is what is the output of this entire thing well the output of this entire thing is going to be is going to be m of b remember this m of b over here this m of b right there is the output is is the is the output that the the type the type of key of a is s is the monadic value m of b now what should i what is what is what is one value that has a type of m of b the well, one value that has a type of m of b is nothing but again a function is again a function that takes in a state it takes in a state as an input and gives you back as an output as an output a tuple of a comma state now because i'm dealing with b here so again this most specifically should be a b okay so let's make the b there 
So this piece, this piece is nothing but a function. If k of a is a function, what does this function want in as an input? Well, as an input, it needs another state. It needs a state. And where am I going to get a state from? The state is basically coming from this y. This y is the new state that got computed when I passed in the original state s to my monadic value m. So if I take k of a, and on k of a, on k of a, if I, if I, if I apply on this entire function, a state s what is this going to result in if i apply the state state in this case okay let me be consistent this is not s here but it's actually y okay if i apply y i'm going to get back i'm going to get back a tuple i'm going to get back a tuple so this entire thing this entire thing is going to result in a tuple and i'm going to call that let's say b comma z all right, and again, these are my lead bindings here. So, uh, so this is all part of my lead bindings. So, okay, all right. So, let of this equals to k a y and uh, n. And now, what should this entire entire method, this entire method over here, what should this entire method over here? Now, again, this is not a list here. I'm just I'm just trying to use a parenthesis just to make it clear. So, what should this entire method over here give you back as an output? This entire method should give you back as an output. If I look at the bind method, it should give you back as an output something of kind, of type, of type M of B. What is that M of B here? Well, this M of B is already, already computed. It's right there. It's this basically, it's basically this, uh, uh, I've already got my B, I've already got my Z after computing my um, uh, KY. So, uh, so this entire thing over here is going to give you back. I'm just going to, I'm just going to return in this case just my tuple, just my tuple in this case, which is b comma c. Now again, just to be consistent with my colors, I should be putting this in blue. This is b comma comma c. Okay. All right. So, uh, so what we have done over here is we have just we have just taken this capital M, which which belonged which had a kind of star to a star and we made it an instance of the of the monads of the monads type class after making it an instance of the monads type class i just i just uh, in this case i just took the two two important methods here the, the the bind i took the bind and i took the return and i provided the implementation to to these two methods to these two methods if m if my monad m in this case is something of of that going to contain is going to contain basically a value of this of this type signature. Okay, so uh, so let's just just let's just have a look again at this uh, at this uh, at this at this thing just to make sure that it actually just just obeys my 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 signature. So m of k this entire thing uh, is going to is this entire thing this entire piece over here this entire piece over here should give you back should give you back some value that happens to be this monadic value m of b right what does the bind method do it takes in parameter one parameter two it takes in that first parameter my second parameter to type for my first and second parameters is right there this is a type this in green is the type for the first parameter and this entire thing in green over here is the type for the second parameter if it takes in the first two parameters it should give you back something it's this entire thing should give you back something which happens to be of type m of b Okay, so this this piece over here in yellow is the output of my bind operator. Okay, what is this m of b here? Well, this m of b is nothing but just a function. It's just a function that takes in a state and gives you back a tuple. And there you go. It's a function that takes in a state and gives you back. It gives you back finally something as a tuple. So, so my at least my uh, at least my uh, uh, the 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 types of my of my of my parameters match up match up match up fine and uh, likewise this method inside this parenthesis inside this uh, inside these yellow parentheses is basically is basically the um, the this, this entire m of b which i'm represent, representing in this uh, in this yellow yellow box over there okay and um, and uh, what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to uh, at least have uh, one simple example in the next video where we're going to take this idea and uh, basically just create a simple method that um, that uh, that uh, uses this uh, idea uh, uh, and makes makes this a little bit more clear in a sense how i would take something and uh, and, and and use it in a practical example